Let me debunk this myth. Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lenora and boy have I got a story for you. So basically when I started off my food photography journey, the first year that I really got into photography I had a food blog and that I was essentially only photographing food for like as like a creative outlet for my food blog. I loved it and that's really how I found out about my passion for food photography. The thing that really got to me was how am I going to book clients with the equipment that I have and I don't know why but I really had a lack of confidence with how having the equipment that I had would be portrayed to a client say in a restaurant shoot or yeah just in any situation where the client would like see you with your gear like I really had this issue with it and I don't know why I was just like they're gonna see my camera they're not gonna think it's professional enough I used to get really really stressed about it and I thought that the only way that I would book someone is if I had like a super professional camera that cost a fortune you know and I think that was very very stressful when I first started out. For all of you out there that have just started your journey, want to book clients and are a bit fearful because you think there's no way I can book a client, even remote work with the equipment that I have, like the camera's not good enough, etc etc. So I am here to debunk that myth because not only did I book my first client with the equipment that I had but I went to a restaurant shoot with that very same equipment and the results were great and everyone was very happy with them and actually no one cared. They're booking you because you're a photographer and they have trusted you based on the photos they've already seen in your portfolio so they don't care what camera you show up with or if you look the part or not like they don't care because they've hired you let me tell you what camera I started off with so the EOS M50 Canon so this was my baby for I cannot tell you how long like yeah I would say the first so that year that I was doing vlogging and then after that about eight months into being a food photographer like working for clients eight months using this camera the reason why I love this camera so much is because it's light it's compact very very easy to use and it's not incredibly overwhelming like there's not a crazy amount of buttons that you sort of need to understand or anything like that especially to start off with I mean when you start shooting in manual mode and you have no clue what you're doing this is a great camera for people who get easily overwhelmed like this just makes it very, very easy. The flippy screen is great. I mean, you can just completely manipulate the screen to however you want it to be. Some remote work, I won't lie, like I whip this bad boy out sometimes. So yeah, I mean, it's a great camera. I use it all the time still. I did on-site shoots, remote work. I did videography, I did photography. You name it, this camera was the only thing I had. I didn't have the money to invest in like a big camera. I mean, everything that you earn is invested into new equipment and that's fine. But when you're just starting out, you're sort of juggling this, how am I gonna pay the bills with this amount of money? You know, and you're sort of juggling quite a lot of things. And the first thing that you think of is not, how am I gonna buy this camera that costs like six grand? Like it's not very achievable in the first couple of months. Trust the gear you have. It's not about, and I know so many people read this online, but it's really not about the camera itself. How to work your camera is the most important bit because everything else can be improved, but there's no point you buying a super duper expensive camera if you don't know how to work it or you don't know how to work this camera first. So I remember when I actually upgraded and I'll show you, I'll do another video where I sort of show you all the gear that I've got now. I got my new camera and I was, I can't even tell you, like I was so stressed with my new camera because it was really heavy, it felt really bulky. And I just thought, oh my goodness, like I made the biggest mistake in my life. Cause this one's really light, small, compact. And the other one was like big and bulky. So Callum said to me, and I'll never forget this. It's really great that you knew how to do all these sort of different shots with the camera that you had and now you know how to do them on the camera that you've got. So yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. You can sort of transfer your skills. It's brilliant. This is a 15, 45 milliliter lens. And I know that it's very controversial, but a lot of people say that the lens that comes with the camera, because I bought this as a set, so the body and the lens, they say, they, I mean, who's they? But people online say, don't use this lens, it's really crap, it doesn't do anything. I mean, I could not disagree more. Who in their right mind, when you start off, has the money to be buying 101 different lenses? Like seriously, if you don't even know anything about photography, like you don't, that's really not, oh sorry, I'm gonna look at all the lenses, no. I would say start off with this lens, see if you like it, and work with this one until you actually know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, that's really a huge word of advice for me. A lot of people say, like buy a new one, just buy the body and then buy an expensive lens. No, like just work with the one you've got because so many things, can, like I did so much with this lens. I can't even begin to tell you. Like I'll show you a few photos of all the photos I took with this lens. Like you probably won't believe it. You'll think I used a much more expensive lens for it. 
I would say I used this lens for about a year and a half, maybe a bit less than that, before upgrading to the Nifty 50. And this lens is really good for like close-up shots. Um, I'll show you a couple of photos that I've taken with them. It really did change my photography game. It really leveled it up massively. I didn't realize how much I needed this until I started using it, if that makes sense. If anything, I would have got this lens much, much sooner than I did. And it's not too heavy either. I mean, it's very, very easy to carry around, take traveling. It's a very, very easy lens to use. And I would just, what I would do is literally just like take this lens out and switch it out for this one. And this was great when I first started out. When I understood how to use and manipulate this lens, and then I started using this lens, I sort of knew what I was doing already, so that was really good. So I feel like actually my progression with cameras has been very, very healthy. Like it's gone from, right, I know exactly how to use this lens and how to manipulate it. Let me go to like the next best thing that I can afford. And I paid this monthly for like, three months I think and I paid it off. I actually wasn't that expensive really in the grand scheme of things. Very affordable lens especially if you wanted to like up your game a bit. This is great for like close-ups honestly like again I still use this. I used this for that first restaurant shoot I did. This one and this one. Just with this camera seriously I mean you wouldn't believe it would you? Like if you've got this and you've got this even if you've just got the body and this lens here that is really all you need to get started. This camera is actually really affordable. I think it's in the range of about six, seven hundred pounds. If you buy it secondhand, I think you can get it for like 300 or something with like the lens included as well. So it's definitely like, I would definitely recommend this one to start off with. I'll get into my favorite. So the tripod. Now I know a lot of people like like a Manfrotto tripod and I've got one now, but again, they're so expensive. Like they're in the range of like 400 pounds and it is actually mental. To start off with, I got this Victive T72 tripod and it literally cost me like 32 pounds or something like that. And it is brilliant. It's got like a quick release plate here at the top. So you can just take that out any point. So, I mean, it's brilliant for really when you're sort of wanting to put your camera on the tripod, but then you're wanting to sort of release it really quickly and then just take some quick shots whilst your tripod's just sat. And you can also sort of flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. You can like manipulate the entire thing. So you can have your camera shooting up, pointing down and you can sort of tighten it and it does stay in place. Like, trust me, it's really hard to unscrew this sometimes. It's obviously got these sort of three different heights. It's really light, really compact. It comes with like a wee travel bag as well which the Manfrotto one doesn't, which is actually really annoying considering how much you pay for it. So, I mean, all in all, it's like a really, really fantastic piece of equipment for a very affordable price. It's brilliant, actually. I take this still for restaurant photography because of how light it is, how easy it is. Yeah, I mean, I take this one. It's brilliant. It's all you need, seriously, like to start off with. If you're then wanting to like up your game a wee bit, I would definitely recommend a Manfrotto one just because they're sort of there's a lot you can do with them, but this one is like brilliant. And then when I started doing quite a lot of remote work and I needed like overhead shots and stuff like that, and I needed them to be quite accurate, I then invested in like an overhead arm. It works really well with this tripod because all you have to do is literally just attach the quick release plate here, and then you sort of attach it onto the tripod, and then all you need to do is screw that in for the camera. Really, really like this sort of setup. And guys, like honestly, like I use this all the time still, really, like, there's no shame in like using equipment that's like not super duper expensive or looks super professional. Like, oh my goodness, like just use what you've got because there's so much that can be done with what you've got. I don't think people appreciate that enough, seriously. Have the confidence. Don't let the equipment you have or the fear of your photos not being good enough or clear enough or whatever hold you back from reaching out to people or start your food photography career. Like, please don't let it because I am the living proof that I started off with a very, very basic camera. A great camera, but really in the grand scheme of things, like a very basic camera. I really only upgraded my camera like six months ago, so please don't let it stop you. What have you got to be embarrassed about? Yeah, that is my little myth debunk for the day. Has your gear ever stopped you from really like reaching out to people or have you ever just not taken a job but just because of the equipment you had like let me know i'd love to know in the comments below i'll also link everything i mentioned down below for all the equipment and um, because that might help some of you out if you don't really know where to start in terms of like lenses tripods etc i will do another video on like the equipment i have now it's just sort of fun to see what people have in their camera by isn't it yeah i will see you very very soon thank you so much for watching bye